Yeah, Darren's monsters was banned, and Nick's Northern Realm. Okay. Pirates blue coin. Pirates usually I feel like is a more of a red coin deck, but see it coming out first here. Hmm. And without Swabble, this can be a lot tougher for the pirates. Uh, stuff like the deranged corsair can be quite important. Uh, have the ability to kind of have more white damage spread wide. Yusiana can be quite nice, stacking up. This is quite nice though. You have this incinerating trap. I think it is five. Yeah, it is five probes. Better. Half of the five probe demon smuggler still lives through the trap. Out comes the knickers. Yeah, Abadosh can be a little bit difficult to set up here. You'll start to see this lack of proactivity come in to bite Darren quite poorly, I'd say. If you really want compass in hand here, this card's one of the abordages. There, no, there is a scroll in deck for Nick, so yeah, you're not going to discard the compass. Maybe a consideration if you're able to sort of accept that minus one pin on the echo. If the there was no scroll, but I just that important to not give that opportunity over. Super duper early terror. The sea is able to kind of just bank some of the armor though. The thing is that now Nick, with the first star uh, heist out, does have to kind of show you play a bit of your Angus and and stuff. Because otherwise the heist can just be bled out and then you suddenly got less great of a situation. Next, we're getting rid of a little bit of the armor there. I okay. Um, so, we'll clean it up, but... Nick can just play it back for an Yeah. First, typically. And it ain't. Yeah, this is yeah the Vanadine coming up before. This is our Let's put the two bronzes fly. down. You're not welcome here. I expect this to die as well. I feed the waters. Just enough damage for the extra arm being gained onto Tear of the Sea though. Look, to be fair, Tear of the Sea won't be super amazing in a later round. It only has a four point body. Yes, even if you kill one of the opponent's units, if that opponent isn't super big, the carry the seas doesn't matter awfully much. Point slam, like your uh, nine power pirates, very well could play for more points in the terror of the seas. So yeah, Sorcerer it does feel bad to have it coming out here. What can you do? What can you do? <laughs> Crack is quite nice to have. And Kruk can be very good in this matchup. If you have the sort of lower power elves and you just have a bit of armor on whatever you play, it'd be very, very good. Uh, you need a little bit more thinning here. You need this Abadage to go through, and then you need one of the Vabion or the Raiding Fleet. Uh, you could also YOLO the Demon Pirate. With what's remaining in deck, it's not a terrible play, YOLOing the Demon Pirate here. It was just maybe leading Kruk is a bit safer too. Uh, is there a Serpent Trap? There is, yeah, but you don't want to lead Kruk against Serpent Trap. You don't want to actually have Kruk as your lowest unit. The first play could be a little bit difficult. Instead, to be fair, as pirates, you know, you should be able to kill basically anything important the turn it's played. Uh, so, maybe you don't mind taking Heist into the long round where hopefully you're able to play around the traps and uh, have stuff like Kruk live long enough and that value. Um, there is no CRN in this list. So the only real way to deal with the Kruk is through damage. Problem being that if you do try and kill the Kruk through that, 
then we very well could just see Compass playing for Kushin to crawl. Although, Compass could also just pull Svalblood. Uh, I don't think there'll be a way to sort of re-trigger the Svalblood, but that, yeah, very well work. Instant Trap, that is the uh, Deception that will be spawned in the Triple Dead Eyes. What, tra what traps are remaining here? What would you be worried about? Yes, yeah, so it's either that or Pitfall. I'm just taking the heat wave. Interesting. Human oh. pirates are real awkward. We're actively here. You don't want to do crack and plane to serpent either. I mean, okay. Let's say you do play a pirate. You'd be screwed if you hit raiding. Actually, no, you could hit raiding fleet, and then you just have to shoot a feral bond with the Vabion. It does take the risk. Just finds the Giga Score. Probably the best thing to get rid of, honestly. Or may maybe actually the boat would have been better to get rid of the uh, front row boat. But now, now you are in a similar spot. Do you just play the second pirate? It doesn't feel great. This is Serpent Trap, and Serpent Trap is. They're not bad. It's nine power you. Yeah. And this is the thing, Avadages can make your proactivity your proactivity so much more painful. Instead just stop oh, Yep, okay. Fine I have to play the croc. Not much choice here. Yeah, that's a bang. You will kill the crack here with Serpent Trap. The crack is worth a whole lot more than just a 9 point pirate. The 2 point delta certainly made up by the actual abilities that crack provides. <laughs> Back to square one, no proactivity. Oh wait, no, unit is played. So tired. Nick played a unit? What is this? Okay, uh, so now you can actually play the Vabio and get your thinning through. Actually get a boat on board so this second pirate doesn't completely suck. Get a bit of bloodthirst going so maybe the abordage is a bit more reasonable. <laughs> Acro boat. This does give a bit of information on the deploy to Nick, saying that there are four cards in hand. Four pirates in hand, and uh, if Nick is keeping track of the deck, um, it's clear that every single pirate in the deck that hasn't been played is in hand at this point. And yeah, with the Serpent Trap used up, no other Toll Punch exists, you are able to go as tall as you like on that one unit. Here comes the waylays. I'm curious what the best comp target at this point would be. Yeah, here's the Abadage, quite nice here. Oh, draws the boat. Probably would have preferred the Feral Bond at this point. But it will at least help get Bloodthirst fairly cheaply, I suppose. I mean, yeah, okay, you have Swell Blood, which you'll do a decent job of like, just damaging everything by one. Hemdale doesn't quite cut it. If you're able to damage enough things sufficiently, this could be a Wild Boar of the Sea kind of game. But with the reward and playing the Isn't Grim, I don't think that's really gone don't into hesitate. fruition. Just this should be the Isn't Grim. Or is it Venosu? No, it, it has to be Isn't Grim. You want the Isn't Grim because then you're able to kind of uh, threaten a lot more all in one run. I lead a commit, I think, to end up dealing with both. No, it actually goes for the Venosio. Okay. Aim between the eyes. Leave none alive. Yeah, 
it's nice if you just leader kill Riordan and then you go on the Pretty big point difference. I mean, dreadfully sorry. Granted, <laughs> the sappers in hand isn't that good. But at the same time, the verification is solid ten points. The Yaven is pretty decent. I mean, I guess the Yaven would basically just kill this uncreate longship. Um, is Spjorn being returned in place? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Okay, replaying the trickster, I suppose, makes sense since it's really the only deploy of value right now. I mean, Yaven is in theory the most valuable, but I, it's just going to be creeped up by the Bjorn. So I expect you Steon to come out? Maybe... Yeah, I think you just have to use Steon. You, you have to expect like the Yevin and Isengrim, one of them to be the second last card. You need your Bjorn to deal with whichever one is played. You'd be expecting at least one of them to be missing though, I think, at this point, because there's no reason to play Sabbaths before them. Yeah, replaying the trickster. Yeah, sure, the infusion's only thing. Armor. But if that is your Yaven target, then it does translate to more damage on Yaven. Okay. This is actually the compass time. Okay, it is the spell blood. Makes sense, I guess. You maximize bloodthirst on the Yarn Bjorn right now. Use a leader to kill enough with a trickster. I think that makes sense. I mean, Gavin will knock the Svalbard down to one. Get cleaned up by the Bjorn, but slightly trade up to the Bjorn. Actually, no, they'll play for the same number of points, really. Bjorn a little bit short of getting the extra bear from the Svalbard, but the Usiana will do the trick here. Uh... So tired. I don't think you even need the bear spawn from this far block here. The Ustiana should be sufficient. That is the win for Pyrex. It's very, very awkward through a lot of that since the uh, proactivity Pirates was proving problematic. But they proceed with a victory. Garen takes the lead here, 1 to 0. And Nick will have to try again with the elves later on, potentially on the second red coin in game three. But meantime, what would we expect on the agenda? I'm gonna update. Bonnie client website isn't gonna update. Okay, now it is stream. Now Nick is gonna go on to the blue coin. Um, if you want to make use of the curse scroll strategy, you can take the uh, bandit spam list. Or you could go for kind of just your pirate's curve, which tends to be a bit more flexible in terms of what coin you're happy to take it on. But the blue coin win now for Darren. Could just be red coin symbiosis trying to get a bit of red coin abuse going. I would not at all be surprised to see that coming through. But I expect them both to have uh, problems against Nick's Nilfgaard because <laughs> the Skoya and Syndicate both devotion for Darren. So yeah, good luck. <laughs> I, I don't know how they're going to be able to deal with uh, all the uh, iron. Falcon knife jugglers.
Shayoma. Hang in. I love the Shayoma. Oh, oops. Okay, there we go. There's the one. Uh, you guys missed the Shayoma. Did like <laughs> jump in the midair barrel roll onto the screen. It was sick. You just have to take my word for it. Nick is still in hand here for Nick. I expect that will be the cursed scroll target to put to the bottom of the deck. Baron immediately developing the Hard Dryad. I wonder if Baron will still be able to out to engine all the bandits that Nick is able to put out. This is already quite a few funded goals. I like how they're quite synchronized in their animations as well. Kind of mesmerizing. We have bleeding on the back row, vitality on the front row, and uh, what else are we gonna play? If you want to play the Austrian, you'd have to go to the uh, uh, ow. I I'd expect you need the Austrian really to test this round. I'd expect it to even come out this turn. For Could be the fact. Yep. Here's Oshua. I was frank and truthful. There goes the uh, nature infusion to all the Nyads. And uh, there goes Oshua. Uh, it's good around nature, but maybe a heat wave is a bit extreme of a natural phenomenon. Interesting using the Nyad to protect the. Uh, their own juggler there, preventing it going to the graveyard stops it being a valid target for any potential uh, illusionist. Also, I forgot, Nickers is a good target for Strays of Sparta to put back in the deck, be able to develop their bond in that way. Round one leader. Gets the additional I'm fucking knife juggler. Never feels good using blue leader on blue point. Even in even in a deck like this, I have to expect. But yeah, it does manage to kill off that uh, knife fledgling. It'd be a lot easier to do a round now. Does Darren think they can still contest? Are they going to commit the Tempest? Get that thinning through? Get the weather set up? I'd expect all the fog to go into the back row here. There's really not much to hit on the front row. Yeah. It's perfectly timed with six cards and for Nick and six turns of weather as all those cards get played. Even extra vitality coming out. Um, but not boosting the Hammer Dryad, playing around the Curse of Corruption here. It's quite nice that Fog does damage to the lowest unit and does enable playing around a Curse Corruption that way. And the Strays of Spala having additional cards at 8 power it makes that just a little bit harder to uh, have a good Curse of Corruption available. You do see the Fog actually hit one of the Iron Falcon Knife Jugglers, not the Operator. So she will now be killed off in a couple of turns, susceptible that thick, thick fog. Yeah, I guess it is quite hard to juggle when you're blinded by the fog, probably end up sticking a knife into yourself when you a cat. A little bit morbid. It's also quite morbid getting uh, entangled in the twisting lines and dying that way, and then I guess your body gets turned into compost to boost an enemy. Yeah. Yeah, despite the leader being used by Nick, this is still looking quite winnable for Darren. The side. First scroll is still an option, however. By the way, just a quick aside. All you people who were sick of Double Maddock but didn't nerf Slave Driver, I don't get it. 
Like, Safe Driver enables so much cheese like this. If you don't like Double Matter, I'm sure you're the same person who doesn't like this kind of stuff. Who said you can't win wars with yeah, music? anyways. Guess yet another Iron Falcon Knife Juggler. Doesn't mind playing them from hand here. You can get them later with Illusionist. Use. You do need the Illusionist in hand to be able to get use out of your room one. Hmm. Use the Treant reset to kill one of the uh, Iron Falcon Knife Jugglers a little bit earlier, so it doesn't get a potential reset when the unit was played here. Now these safe drivers are not looking particularly great right now. We might see both of them heading back into the deck, or at least one of them at minimum. Because there's no real other, yeah, there's no soldier on board right now for them to be good. They're good later in the game when the illusionists are all on board. Actually, I'm a bit curious. What is this leader? Like, is this leader... The operator's used round one. What is it meant to target in, like, later times? Uh, is this... Oh, this is just Illusionist, of course. Oops. Still barely has the bond open the Iron Falcon Life Jugglers. Quite a few rebukes been used already by Darren, however. We might see another offensive, uh, my Pond Keeper on a 2 power Wandering Treant. Get rid of Bonded. Another nature trigger. Yeah, this... I don't think Nick can afford to play the second illusion and here. We could see One-Eyed Betsy being used. The illusionist here, getting that replay. Getting another Iron Falcon Knife Juggler and then this Caravan Vanguard coming forward. And that's probably about it for um, round here. Down probably would have to commit the similar response because I don't think a hammer dried leader would be enough to make it up. Yeah, eight points, ten with the fog. Nick's definitely doing at least six points this turn. And here's the thing, you could commit the Simless. Uh, note this... Oh, sorry, this is non-diversion. Why did I say it was diversion? I went way too quickly for the checklist. So yeah, we're playing for... East Spring Equinox's 12 points. Simless. You might just be pegging Nick on having an unplayable lost card here. I mean, it can get quite awkward. In fact, I think maybe even playing this illusionist back or kind of gave a bit of a hint that Nick wasn't actually going to want to play into this. Because if you had another bonded unit, you'd play the illusionist front or so that the knife juggler that spawns doesn't die. So you miss more points not getting the bonded on the knife jugglers than having the uh, fog get one damage. That is the one on even here for Symbiosis. Really good draws as well with the Philavandral. Or in Amber. <laughs> the Vandal gets changed for board. I think just wants more to put. Yeah, just gonna go for his short round. There's a bit into curse here. I'm not sure you really needed to go like straight for the vitality on the drive here. Though you would be ahead. Oh no, you won't be ahead. One kills one of the Iron Falcon Knife Juggles. A bit greedy, I think, not to take that uh, order for Nick. There is actually always the option to get the curse with the Roderick. But this is basically a free bleed for Darren after the win on even. You don't need to worry about retaining last say because you win on even. Your gourd is guaranteed to go through. You don't need to worry about the curse onto your gourd, provided you draw your gourd. 
which with six cards in deck and in Isengrim's Council, the odds are very much, yeah, you're gonna have access to it. You'll be able to find both Philavandrum for the short round three, which is very tall. Okay. The Vogelfort's Renegade. Mushy Truffle. I mean, Mushy Truffle would be better here, right? Things I don't think it gets ahead. Oh no, it will get ahead. You have the bonded on the other Yeah, yeah, it'll do the trick. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I couldn't see the other Iron Falcon Knife Juggler behind the uh, uh, card shot. Okay. So, do you commit the uh, Lambert here trying to trade out the final card? Fights. Yes, I will. Sure. And uh, we know, in fact, it's actually. Darren knows it's Illusionist because Ramon was played. Note that despite all these Illusionists being on board, the one that the Ramon played from hand, or copied from hand, is well, still in hand. Just has to be played, and this can make it a bit harder for this uh, Mushy Truffle to actually go through next round. Harder to get three bodies in a row, particularly if you have like you know, the Philavandral uh, creating a rebuke. By the way, hasn't Philavandral kind of just power crept um, <laughs> Forest Protector now? Loki Forest Protector deserves a one power buff now. <laughs> Oh yeah, and something like a teleportation sucks. Battle stations requires a very specific kind of bronze. I mean, okay, you can what have uh, Dathan Arbalist and a slave driver, but then what are you drawing? Okay, yeah, you build Renegade. Yeah, you just have to get rid of the battle stations. Build Renegade can get you something nice. Um, Call the forest gets you slave driver. Um, Similar for double teleportation. It's uh, not so hot. And then you can just do Philavandral now. Okay, it's a seven provision unit. Yeah, that's a double frog mating season. That's, uh, yeah, certainly sufficient. In the short round here. I don't think Darren basically needs to play any more cards almost at this point. It's This is just not close. Eskul can kill Philavandra, sure. This score doesn't even need to be played, but it will play for 15 points. And we'll have a... Oh, not even gonna play it. <laughs> okay. 2-0 lead now in the series for Darren. Very well played, I think. Um... They, give, they had options, right? You literally running your you're running cursed scroll. You had this curse of corruption in hand, which you had to put back in deck. I wonder if something like battle stations should have just been played in the round one, just to help cycle and develop more engines at a little quicker degree. That's not enough. And yeah, very convincing. Um, Game there after that went on even from Darren. Knew like you just couldn't let uh, the uh, imposter get away with the round control, and once the game was in uh, Darren's hands, just did not let go. So that's a win with the Skellige, win with the Squirtle. Now Darren just needs a win with the Syndicate Pirates Cove. Now Nick, on the other hand, has to get. Uh, yeah. 
all three decks through in a reverse sweep as part of its curve, including in the mirror. I'm curious on how uh, the <laughs> pulling the strings is going to go with the, the bonded spam list. And also the elves. Elves can have a bit of a tough time dealing with stuff like brawlers or Orson's juniors. And if there's enough gangs pulling the strings, can even seize, uh, you know, like the uh, Vanadane and what. Are we seriously? Do we have leader glitch for game four? Or game three in this series? Okay, no, thank goodness. It, it would have been painful if we had Syndicate here with uh, no uh, coin count. I need to go back into. The I apologize. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I was a bit worried about. Having to cast Syndicate, or potentially even a Syndicate Mirror with no coins. Now, Nick is actually taking me off guard on the red coin this time. Very, very quick start here for Dowron. Establishing a lot of tempo straight away. Maybe expecting that Nick is missing pieces since the operator hasn't been played this round. Uh, although, in saying that, these uh, Nickers and Highwaymen, along with the uh, pretty solid straights of Sparla, provide a lot of tempo, uh, having technically only played two full provision units so far. Once, Little Bird coming up from Darren. Probably the most efficient bronze spender in the game, I'd say. Already spending at a one rate. Actually push that even more. Ah oh, yeah, by the way, she did take the blind eye tag here. They're releasing a blind eye in hand. So pulling the string is at four right now. Let's see for hand fixing. Draws Illusionist. Does get the Iron Falcon Knife Juggler. The Operator can be online now. Could you say? <laughs> you never ask. Ooh. No coins in the bank right now. Slammed? Right, some of the, uh, well, this confession extracted just to play the maximized coin. I, yeah, I'm not sure how easy it would be to collect on a bounty. Maybe you just bounty the knickers in case you decide to play the uh, horse and junior this round. I think that's the most viable. Choice. Sort of setting up three coins, three points later on if you decide to play. Uh, or if you're low on money, you can basically use insanity to keep three coins and not do more things. Another question is, would you rather just put some junior or pulling the strings to start dealing with this? I don't think you let these knife jugglers develop. The answer is gonna pull. Fair, yeah, you can also just bleed uh, the knickers down here, and that <laughs> kind of sets <laughs> sets it up for later. It's not bad. Now the thing is, here is Nick. How much are you willing to invest, and how much you would? Because your illusionist is not online. You're down by a pretty decent margin. There's a bit of a ticking time bomb attached to the knickers there. You actually go for the Iron Falcon Knife Juggler. Now this is starting to get a little awkward for Darwin. Don't have enough coins. So, oh, okay, you could go for a Shady Vendor actually.
There even could be an argument to temper pass. If Darren thinks they're able to use their pulling the strings to stem the tide enough, having first say can be critical. I don't think that's wise. Necessarily, but maybe it could work. And yeah, it, it is the temper pass. Un unless Nick commits the leader, you're not doing this anymore. Away from my wares! Away! Decides to keep the leader. To be fair, the leader basically means that any pulling the strings on a knife juggler just gives an opportunity for Nick to get another knife juggler. That constant threat can make the pulling the strings a lot less good. Alternatively, I mean, would it be possible to kill all the illusionists? I doubt it. Right? There's one from the truffle, one from the Ramon, two from the deck. No surprise here, we're going for the long round. And we actually we did see Pirates Curve uh, struggling in the long round and getting the whole entire board filled up. So hopefully Darren uh, doesn't fall into that same trap. We will see. I miss how the old pulling the strings list would run the uh, horse team. I, I like that. But no space for in the current version, I think there's sort of justice where you would have previously had the Doesn't keep the curse of corruption. Curious what the uh, Vigilfort's Renegade is going to be on. I think there's many great targets right now. Makes sense. Do you want to deal with both of them? Because at least if you're able to not have the illusions having bonded, then you're able to just, you know, spend on the uh, horse and junior to pull off any of the knife jugglers at low power. Okay. That's a slower play now. I assume you want to either illusionist slave drive or just double illusionist all in one turn. Or teleportation. I mean, teleportation is pretty good either on illusion slave drive, and I don't expect them all to be killed off. Um, but yeah, with the Dathan Arbus and the Bonded now, goodbye, horse. Oh wait, he's at 5 power now, he doesn't die. No, he's not at 4 power. It's not good by horse, and he gets to stay for one more turn.
yeah. Besides, he just doesn't want the horse to live. That's why the impossible leader is used. Now we see bad option from the Novograd. Might be able to help, uh, you know, stem the uh, a lot of knife jugglers. That collusion was missing a blind eye. I think otherwise it's as good as you can get. Okay, with the leader used now, pulling the strings are a whole lot nicer. There is the one in hand, and then this shitty vendor on the board. Oh, sorry, in hand as well. Yep. Mushy Truffle just gets another illusionist. Yeah, the victim and all of this does combine quite nicely to help uh, these uh, knife jugglers actually kill things off. I only need four pieces, except sometimes they're quite fresh. And there we go. Strings have been pulled on a knife juggler. Maybe those knives are just all attached to strings. Then they've just been yanked away. I don't know. But apparently, there's only one knife juggler on board for Nick. And uh, Darwin is having quite a hefty lead. So the thing is that all these cards still in Nick's hand, but all they do is really just play more knife jugglers. They're not getting that additional value that Nick really needs. And you can see another shady vendor trying to get hopefully pulling the strings or a payday if it's a miss here for Darwin pulling the strings yep and in fact having four gangs on board is the perfect amount for when you're sealing four power units with the pulling of the strings Yeah, now bank is a bit less great. There's a, uh, and I guess this is now time for the little bird to be set up. We'll try to, yeah, I'll just get the, uh, actually wait, is all the tags now? Oh, you know, all the tags. Cause yeah, yeah, you know, cause, oh no, sorry, there wasn't four tags. There's four tags for the collusion, or collusion doesn't count in Salamander. That's the difference. Uh, Yeah, I mean, these last few cards, they're still getting a bit of value, but there's no more bonded units remaining. Knife jugglers are not doing uh, much more knife juggling. And uh, yeah, this this little bird will be getting a lot of value now over the last few turns here. Spending six for two, right? Is it actually the heat wave getting this card? Okay. Wilson is an 11 point card, to be fair. Any hole will do. And uh, what, Bank is just gonna get a fist tech now because the board is full. Yeah, and then just make sure you don't have a profit by spending with a little bird first. And yeah, that should just be that. Darren looking clean. But, I mean, doesn't even need to play this, but. This is like huge. I mean, little birds still spending the all the gangs on board, uh, and the share mark collapses to the floor. As does Nick's hopes of continuing in the upper bracket. Nick will now be going down into the lower bracket, and Darren has made it through to the finals of the upper bracket. And that does mean that Darren is now just one win away from making it to open number two.